Hi, my name is Alex Parker. I'm a senior product manager here at Replicated, and today I'm going to demonstrate for you the enterprise experience. And what that is specifically is once a vendor has onboarded to Replicated and is ready to distribute their application to their customers in the enterprise, whom we'll call end users, this demonstration shows how those end users can install and upgrade that application in their environment. We're gonna to focus today on the online existing cluster use case, which means that the end user already has an existing Kubernetes cluster that they can use, and that cluster has internet connectivity. With Replicated, you're also able to install to environments that don't yet have Kubernetes and that don't have internet connectivity, like an air-gapped environment. In order for an end user to install, they need two pieces of information. They need a license that entitles them to install the application, and they need a command with which to install the application. If you watched our day zero demo, both of these assets were outputs of that demo. So assuming we have those pieces of information, we can go ahead and get started. And the first thing that's gonna happen is we're going to download the COTS plugin, and then we're gonna use that plugin to install the application. We're first going to be asked to provide a namespace. So this defaults to the application slug for the application that we're trying to install. So I've accepted that default. And this Kubernetes namespace is where the application and the admin console are going to be installed in the cluster. So the replicated admin console is a part of the replicated platform that gets installed to the end user's environment. And it's a graphical user interface that allows the end user to manage and interact with their application. So they can install it for the first time, they can check for updates and then upgrade the application as subsequent versions are made available to them, they can sync their license to ensure that their entitlements are up to date, and as we'll see shortly, there's a lot more that you can do with the admin console as well. The only other piece of information we have to provide in this install process is a password and that password is used to authenticate to the admin console. So whatever password you provide here, remember it so that you can use it once we get the admin console up and running. You'll have to enter it there in order to access it. So at this stage, we're just waiting for the admin console to be installed and be ready, um, at which point we can go ahead and access it. So we can see here that we're presented with information on how to access it. In the existing cluster scenario, Access to the admin console is made possible by port forwarding. So we can just go to localhost port 8800 on our local machine in order to access the admin console. But if I ever X out of this command, then that port forwarding uh, is stopped and I'm no longer able to access the admin console. If that happens, or if I ever wanna just come back and access the admin console at a later date, I can just run this command and it'll open that port forward back up and I can go to localhost 8800 and we'll get our first look here at the admin console. You can see that it already has some branding available based on the application that we're installing. And we'll enter our password that we stipulated during the install process. And now we have to upload our license file. So our software vendor should have given us a license file that we've downloaded to our computer so that we can upload it here. And this is just checking to make sure that we're entitled to install the application. The next step is to provide configuration information. So any configuration that the vendor um, needs in order to install this application uh, based on your preferences or based on your environment or anything else, that configuration is gonna be presented here and the end user needs to input the right information based on their situation. So this is a simple application. So the only configuration we have is just a question about whether or not we want to use ingress but you can imagine that with a more complex application, there might be more configuration options that you need to select. Once I'm done with that, we move on to the pre-flight checks. Now pre-flight checks basically validate that the cluster that we're running in meets the minimum requirements for the application that we're trying to install. There's a whole array of pre-flight checks that can run within the cluster. They can check for things like the amount of CPU and memory that's available the Kubernetes version or distribution that we're running, and so much more. And checking these things just ensures that if we pass them, we have a greater confidence that we're gonna be able to successfully install this application and run it successfully down the line after we get it installed for the first time. So once those checks are done running, we'll be presented with the results. And you can see that in my environment, we've passed all of those pre-flight checks. 
We have a required Kubernetes version. We're on a supported container runtime uh, and a supported Kubernetes distribution. And finally, we have a sufficient amount of CPU within this cluster. If any of these had failed, we could proceed with the install um, at our own risk, but it would be better to go back to the drawing board and remediate any of the failures that the pre-flight checks have exposed and then come back and rerun the pre-flight checks until they've passed before we proceed to install the application. So since we've passed, I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. And then we're brought to the admin console's dashboard for the first time. And there's a lot of different information here, but we'll highlight a few of the key things. First is version information. So I can see that I'm running version 0.1.0 .0 of the guestbook application right now. And I could also look at the history uh, the version history, so I could see all of the versions that have been made available to me over time. Obviously, since I just installed this, I have the one version here, um, but over time, there would be other versions that were made available in that version history. I can also see some basic information about my license, such as when it expires, as well as information about the application. So I can see here that the application is ready, it's up and running, which means that I can go ahead and access the guest book. So this is just a simple guest book, so I can leave a nice message here. And at this point, the end user could interact with the application however they saw fit and do whatever they needed to do with it. If I return back here to the admin console, you can imagine that after I have this application installed for the first time, updating and upgrading that application over time would be a natural next step. Since we just installed this, we have the most recent version here, so we can check for updates, but there aren't going to be any. Um, but you can imagine that over time, as new versions are made available to us, we would have new versions that we could install. So let's go ahead and see what that experience would look like, checking for updates and then upgrading our application in our environment. Now let's assume that some time has passed and the end user software vendor has made available to them another release. How can that end user go about checking for that update, making sure that they're happy with it, and then go ahead and deploy that update into their environment? Well, previously we looked at this version box right here on the admin console dashboard, and we saw what version we currently had, but there's also a button to check for updates. Now you can check for updates automatically on various frequencies, but since we're here in a demonstration, we don't wanna wait for that. So let's go ahead and click the check for update button to see if there are any updates ready for us. In fact, there is one, so you can see that that's getting pulled in and prepared, and we can see that there is a new version available, and that's 0.1.1, which is obviously just a patch release past what we currently have installed, 0.1.0. We can click View here to take us over to the version history page, where we can see all the versions that have been made available to us. At this point, there's just two. There's the first version that we installed, 0.1.0, as well as this new version, 0.1.1. We can see that that first version is currently deployed. And there's a few things we can do to investigate and look into this new version that's been made available to us. One thing we can do is look at the release notes. So in this case, we can see that this new version has updated the number of front end replicas. There's also a diff that shows what files have been changed. So we can actually go and investigate whether those release notes are accurate, and we can come in here and see that in fact, the number of replicas has changed from three to four for the front end deployment, which is consistent. Now, if we go back, there's one more thing that we could look at, and that's the pre-flights. Right now we see that this version is showing as ready to deploy, but if you go back in the video, you'll see that prior, this was running the pre-flights. Now, maybe those pre-flights have changed since the last version of this app was installed. Maybe the requirements are different or maybe they're the same, but either way, when new versions are pulled in, those pre-flights are run to make sure that your environment is still ready for this application and meets those minimum requirements. So we can come in here and look and see that my environment is still satisfactory. And so in light of all of this, if I as an end user am satisfied and confident and ready to update to this new version, I can go ahead and click the deploy button and confirm that and go ahead and get this deployment kicked off to upgrade to version 0.1.1 in this environment. Now, since it's a small change, this happened pretty quickly. We can see that the current version is now 0.1.1 and that version is deployed successfully. Now, normally we could finish right here, but for the sake of this demonstration, let's dig in and make sure that that change actually did take effect. 
So we can go over to the command line and use cube control to investigate the front end deployment and make sure that the number of replicas did in fact change from three to four. So let's go here and we can get the deployments within this namespace. And we see here that the front end deployment does in fact have four replicas that are ready and available. So this change has in fact taken place and we now have four replicas of the front end just like the release notes said that we would. So thank you so much for tuning into the day one demo. At this point, you've learned a lot about the day one experience with Replicated. You've seen how easy it is to install the Replicated admin console into your environment and upload a license to start installing one of your vendor's applications. You've seen how you can easily set the configuration as well as run pre-flight checks to make sure that your environment has those minimum requirements for that application so that you can increase your ch chances of success both in the install and ongoing running of that application. You've also gotten a look at the admin console and seen all sorts of different things that you can do there to manage that application. And finally, you've seen the upgrade process and how simple it is to check for updates within the admin console investigate those updates to make sure that they work for you, and then deploy those updates with a click of a button. So stay tuned for our day two demo as well, where you'll get to see how enterprises can troubleshoot and gain additional value from using Replicated. Thank you so much.